Blank and I both agreed that something had to change. But I was still stunned and not a little hurt when I staggered home one evening to find she'd draped a net curtain slap bang down the middle of our home. She said, I'm over here and you're over there and from now on that's how it's going to be. It was a small house, not much more than a single room which made for one or two practical problems like the fridge was on my side and the oven was on hers and she had the bed while I slept fully clothed in the inflatable chair. Also, there was a Huskadoo CD on her half of the border which I wouldn't have minded hearing again for old time's sake and her winter coat stayed hanging on the door in my domain. But the net was the net and we didn't so much as pass a single word through its sacred veil let alone send a hand crawling beneath it or, God forbid, yank it aside and go marching across the line. Some night she'd bring men back, deadbeats, incompatible, not fit to kiss the heel of her shoe. But it couldn't have been easy for her either, watching me mooch about like a ghost, seeing me crashing around in the empty bottles and cans. And there were good times too, sitting side by side on the old settee, the curtain between us, the TV in her sector, but angled towards me, taking me into account. Over the years the moths moved in, got a taste for the net, so it came to resemble a giant web, like a thing made of actual holes strung together by fine nervous threads. But there it remained, and remains to this day, this tattered shroud, this ravaged lace suspended between our lives, keeping us inseparable and betrothed.